we have a look at the epidemiology of mid-shaft femur fractures now. The incidence of femoral fractures are quite infrequent and the occurrence ranges from only 9.5 to 21 per 100,000 per year, so, so not very many. The incidence peaks among young and then begins decreasing after the age of approximately 20, with these incidences more likely to involve a high energy trauma. While patients who are over 40 are more likely to suffer a mid-shaft fracture from a low to a moderate energy trauma. It's important to note that of this patient age group, 80% have evidence of generalized osteopenia, so some sort of bone disease. We then see a marked increase occur in those over the age of 75, with the most common cause of these mid-shaft femur fractures being from low energy falls. And this will be due to the fact that we have a much higher rate of bone disease such as osteoporosis. In pediatrics, femoral shaft fractures represent approximately 1.6% of all fractures that occur. In older children, it's more likely to be due to a high energy trauma as the mechanism of injury, and this is in 90% of the time. Whereas in younger children, these are usually due to falls. If we look at children under the age of four years old, it is important to note that 30% of mid-shaft femur fractures that occur happen from non-accidental trauma. We look now at the pathophysiology of mid-shaft femur fractures. Normally, the strength of the femur as well as the surrounding muscle serve to protect the bone from fracture in majority of cases. However, once a fracture does occur, the same protective musculature is the usual cause of the displacement of the bones. So as we can see in the pictures on the side, we've got an X-ray of a mid-shaft femur fracture. You can see the two ends of the bone, which are completely broken apart, have been pulled together and are overlapping. This is caused by the muscles on each end pulling the bones together. And this has the potential to cause further damage and extreme pain. Some further complications that may occur from mid-shaft fractured femur may be the bone displacement causing nerve damage or blood loss. Injuries to surrounding nerves are uncommon, whereas the blood loss is a more likely complication. The femur is highly vascularized due to its role in hematopoiesis. The bone is supplied by branches of the femoral artery, thus large volumes of blood can be hemorrhaged when there's a fracture. We can sometimes see up to 1.5 liters. Further to this, the thigh is a large compartment and itself can hold up to three liters of hemorrhage blood. Therefore, if we're assessing a patient who's got a fractured femur, we must keep a close monitor of their hemodynamic stability. Femoral fracture and its treatment are associated with both long-term disabilities and mortality. A study looking at the mortality rate between isolated femur fractures and bilateral femur fractures found that there was a mortality rate of 9.8% versus 31.6%. So quite a high rate of death in a fractured femur. It was also noted that this increase in mortality rate was likely due to the higher energy force and significant injuries to other body systems causing these injuries.